What's up guys, it's BD here and welcome to my behemoth of a PC build for 2022. Now this year I do want to cover more PC hardware stuff. I know I always cover PC peripherals, but I really want to do a deep dive into PC stuff because there's some interesting stuff going on this year. One being this new Alder Lake 12th gen Intel processor. Now this is a sponsored build from Aorus and Intel, but as you guys know, all of my PC builds for like the last three or four years have all been Aura stuff. So I'm just sticking with tradition here. Another thing I wanted to check out was this case. Now, I, this one was critically acclaimed last year. I know like Gamer Nexus called it like the case of 2021. So I definitely wanted to check this one out as well to see how the cooling and everything was. I know I went with the SFF gang last year, but I wanted a little bit more room. I wanted a little bit more cooling. I'm in a hotter place now in California, so I need my cooling to be on point. And I heard really good things about this fractal case. So if you want to get all these parts, it comes out to around $2,000. I'd consider this a high to like mid high ranged PC. So the parts that I used for this case was a full size fractal torrent. Now I love the look of this case. This part really stood out to me, this little grill. It gives me, you know, Mercedes-Benz vibe. And then it has these huge fans in the front. Now, I was originally gonna go with the AIO, but I was hearing so many good things about these fans and how cool they are. And once I turned it on, I immediately knew why, because it cooled the rest of my room. Not just this case, but my face was literally getting blown like I was in a tornado. It's crazy. They got the two 180s at the front, three of the 140s at the bottom, pulling in air, and I can fill the air at the back of the PC even though I don't have an exhaust here. Eventually, I do want to add an exhaust here, but as you guys will see, this thing is already good. At the heart of the build, we have this new Intel 12700K. Now, this is their mid to mid high ranged i7 processor it has a lot of cores so it's going to be good for gaming and also video editing as well so to cool it i did some research and i was going to go with the aio but then i came across this sky fuma 2 and i've been loving air cooling just for how quiet they are and they do a really good job of cooling when i was running an aio in my sff build i was traumatized it sounded like a jet engine was going to land in my freaking room. We got the Aorus 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have a one terabyte storage in there, SSD M2. We got the GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. This is their mid-range card. And this is all sitting on the Aorus Elite AX motherboard. Now this is the DDR4 version. DDR5 is just so freaking expensive right now. I don't know if it's just chip shortages or what, but DDR4 is just more readily available is cheaper and I've heard even the timings on some of these are better than the actual DDR5s. It has a ton of ports on here. It has a bunch of different USB 3.2 ports. It has Wi-Fi so you don't have to buy a Wi-Fi card. And one thing that I really love about Aura's motherboards is their audio. They have a really good chipset on, the Realtek chipset on this motherboard is really good. They've never let me down. So if you're plugging your speakers in or if you wanna just plug in your headphones, they sound really good with this motherboard. But man, can I say that I just missed all these USB ports? Like, let's count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ports on the back here. On my SFF, I had to buy hubs on hubs on hubs. You would have thought we were. For the power supply, we have an Aorus power supply. This is the 750 watt, and this sits up top. I really like the design of this case because you can funnel in all the different power supply places through the little holes, kind of like the O11 dynamic. Funneling everything through the case from the top was very nice. And this part just slides off. It has tempered glass on both sides. Now, I was kind of skeptical, but it's tinted enough where you won't see the cables on the outer side. Now I kind of purposely left it a little bit messy because I want to do a follow up video, uh, putting in some new cables in here and trying to make this look pretty. Essentially what I want to do is a cable management PC build guide soon. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed. So yeah, the build process on this was very nice. I loved building in this case, very easy to build on. I love the RGB in the case. We back on the RGB time. It has a little RGB line right here, strip here. It has RGB on the fans, and this plugs into the RGB header on the motherboard. Other than that, it was a very straightforward build. No issues to complain about, no issues posting. It was just a breeze. Now, one thing that I was scared of was that the fans were going to be really loud since they're so big and they're blowing so much air. But it actually, since the case is so big, a lot of that sound dissipates. And even when you game, it doesn't get too loud.
One thing that really surprised me about this build was how good this CPU cooler is, the Sky Fuma 2. It keeps my CPU around 40 to 45. On my SFF, it was like a little toaster. So having these nice cool temperatures, having cool air blow out of my PC is just something that I haven't felt in a while. And it's really nice and refreshing. No pun intended. Now, as for the performance, it got in the 87th percentile for this whole configuration, which is still pretty damn good. It's right where I said it would be up at that like mid to mid high level PC. If I could do one thing over, I would probably add more RAM, do like 32 gigs of RAM in this build. But this is more of a gaming centered build and 16 gigs for gaming is more than enough. But for video editing and other processes, if I'm doing intensive stuff, Graphical work, I'd want 32 gigs of RAM, if not more. So in game, I'm only doing 1080p gaming, but this should do just fine for 1440p as well. For me, I'm only playing like first person shooters like Valorant, and I know you guys are already gonna crucify me saying, hey, that's not a really graphical intensive game, but it just shows how much this PC can push. As I'm getting like anywhere from like 240, anywhere up to like 415 frames per second, just roaming around the map, even when I'm in a gunfight. So that's really, really nice. And in Halo, I turned everything up on high and I got around 170 frames per second and that game looked gorgeous. On Elden Ring, I was getting a solid 60 frames per second, which is the max, I believe. Now I did dip a little bit here and there, but it wasn't noticeable. There was no stuttering. There was no noticeable drop in frames. And that's what we want. We want that steady frames per second. We want a smooth experience. And this 12th gen Intel provides that. I was kind of skeptical. You know, I was thinking about building an Alder Lake, but I wanted like the i9. You know me, I gotta go all the way. I gotta get the 3090, <laughs> which I do have, and I do want to test in here, but just knowing how powerful these 3070s are and the 12700 is, it's just, it just goes to show how far gaming has come. Now this whole rig will set you back about $2,000. If you can find the parts, I know it's crazy right now. I know, I know. So yeah, let me know what you guys wanna see with this build coming up. I wanna do some more stuff like cable management, maybe even do a water cooling build. It really just, you know, I wanna hear some feedback from you guys, what you guys wanna see me do with this build because there's a lot of potential here. All right, guys, so it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.